Welcome to Netcetera Tech Tribe, navigating life in the IT community, the podcast where we dive into the world of technology, sharing insights, stories, and strategies from the ever-evolving IT landscape. I'm your host, Ivana Paskoska, and I've spent some years navigating the twists and turns in the IT community, all while having the chance to work with some of the brightest Netcetarian minds in the industry. And I'm here to bring their wisdom and experiences straight to your headphones. In this first episode, we are taking a dive into the topic that's been transforming the way we think about technology infrastructure and development, cloud native computing. Cloud native is more than just a buzzword. It's a fundamental shift in how we build, deploy and scale applications in the digital age. It's a mindset that's reshaping the IT landscape from startups to enterprises, and it's here today. But what exactly is cloud native and why it's such a game changer? Today, with my guests Alexander Petreski and Ralf Schenkel, we'll explore the concept and the many benefits it brings, not only to developers, but to organizations as a whole. Welcome, guys. All right. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Ivana. An honor to be here. But before we get into the nitty gritty of cloud native, let's start by understanding what it means and why it's become driving force in the IT industry. Yeah, cloud native is the modern approach to build and run applications designed for cloud environments. The, the definition might state things like uh, microservices, containers, orchestration, and, and DevOps practices. Alexander will maybe talk a bit more about this. It allows massive scale at rapid speeds. And what I like to emphasize, it frees organizations from legacy systems and their inflexibility. Today, cloud native is a key driver for IT innovation. Um, Gartner predicts that uh, 90 to 95% of applications will be cloud native by 2025. So we can probably say it's the new Swiss army knife of modern IT. But isn't the cloud already a commodity? Why doesn't it set to talk about cloud now? Isn't it late? Did we miss the train? I think we are late, but still pioneers. So let me explain it. I agree that the, the general hype around going cloud is maybe over. The topic was on the agenda of many companies years ago. Although Netzetter was a pioneer in cloud computing more than 10 years ago, we didn't really actively push it in the last years. One of the reasons was that we are operating services for highly regulated industries. Getting such services certified in the cloud was difficult in the past or even impossible. For a while, we see now a movement in this regard. The big cloud providers worked hard to change this. So to answer your question, moving general purpose services to the cloud has definitely become a commodity, but for highly regulated services, we are still in an early phase, I think. And as mentioned uh, with Gartner, that predicts everyone is working on making their applications cloud native. The same survey also states that the majority of the decision makers in the companies do not know what cloud native is. That's why I think that Netcetro is a pioneer. Um, Rolf, maybe we can say a few words about what made all this possible. What did the cloud suppliers did to make operations of highly regulated workloads possible? I see three main contributions of the big suppliers as Amazon and Microsoft and Google that support this new trend. The first is they passed all sorts of certifications that are needed to operate a regulated workload. So, for example, payment card industry certifications like PCI DSS and PCI 3DS. Second, they created ready to use compliant services tailored for such industries. The consumer of such services does not need to care about compliance of these services anymore. And third, they support companies and providers on this trip. Okay, so the cloud suppliers did their job and got the certifications, right? Now, my question is, is it possible to get PCI DSS 3DS certifications for the platform you or we built in the cloud? It definitely is. Already a year ago, we managed successfully to pass the PCI DSS and 3DS certifications for a couple of projects in our portfolio. 
Sure, this was not easy at all. However, etc. already has huge experience operating highly regulated platforms. So passing the certifications was relatively easy. Additionally, in many areas, the responsibility lies with the cloud provider, which makes our life easier. And it's not only about the possibility of moving the regulated workload to the cloud, it can offer you and your customers a competitive advantage. Look at some of the modern neobanks. They manage to operate their complete banking systems in the cloud, and they proved that this can result in a massive competitive advantage. For example, in regards to agility and faster implementation cycles, they are able to provide features requested by customers much quicker. But we didn't just wait for the cloud providers to get their jobs done. There is also a lot to do on developer side. Sure, as you said, one part is the infrastructure, but then we also have the products or the applications we built. The topic of cloud native and microservice architecture has been present for quite some time in our company. So from the developer side, Alexander, can you say something about cloud native key tools and concepts? Yeah, sure. Being cloud native means designing, building and operating applications specifically for the cloud. It involves decompositions or utilizing microservices, containerization, and of course, using orchestrations to ensure that applications are highly flexible, resilient, and they can be managed at scale. This approach differs from the traditional methods we were used to, and that's why our product or development teams had to follow this concept and they heavily invested in both doing and learning. And to be honest, uh, for me, what I see very positive in the whole process in our company is that we are not trying to mimic what other big corporations do. We are trying to apply the concepts, ideas, and tech stack that we think it fits for us. Now, when it comes to the key tools or technologies, that's where it could become very challenging. If you see, for example, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation landscape and see this number of tools and technologies growing, it gets very challenging. Additionally, cloud providers provide hundreds of services. That's why at Netcetera, we decided to invest in an internal development platform supported by very skilled platform engineers. With that, we try to reduce the cognitive load and we try to provide a set of pre-configured tools and services with security and compliance baked in. And what would you say are the benefits that we as a company envision? Um, transitioning to the cloud has significantly improved our resource utilization. We also see that it has a positive impact on infrastructure costs. By adopting cloud native principles, we expect faster development cycles, quicker time to market and increased stability. Our applications are becoming more reliable. We can quickly respond to changes and to the customer needs. Now what's in for the developer, you might wonder? Can you say something about that, Alexander? Oh, yes. I mean, cloud platforms provide developers with ready to use services and resources, enable enables faster development and reduce time spent on managing the infrastructure. Being cloud native, of, of course, allows for greater flexibility and innovation. And now developers can focus on writing code and building features rather than worrying about hardware provisioning, scaling or I don't know, maintenance. It streamlines the development process and it promotes a more collaborative and efficient working environment. In the end, developers get a safe place for innovation, which is very nice, I think. Why is platform engineering considered the next evolution of DevOps in infrastructure? Can you elaborate more on the topic of the internal development platform? What 
do we provide to the development teams? So DevOps had been uh, an idea of bringing together development and operations teams working on delivering a product that brings uh, a value to the customers at the end. And this all sounds very nice. However, today's cloud native world is a pretty complex one. I talked a little bit about the cloud native computing foundation landscape and the cloud providers offerings. That's why the idea of internal development platform was born. As I mentioned before, our internal development platform covers a variety of technologies and tools. We're trying to integrate them in a such a way that it reduces the cognitive load on developers while keeping the essential context and underlying technologies. With this platform, we enable self-service, which is very crucial for having faster development cycles. Or let me try to put it differently. We provide capabilities and interfaces to the application teams. When it comes to the capabilities, these are ready-made solutions or piece of code that provision resources in an opinionated way with the possibility to adjust some parameters and configurations as needed. Talking about interfaces, this is how we expose the capabilities I just mentioned. And battling the clouds, what are the common difficulties or barriers organizations face when embracing cloud native technologies? And here including regulatory changes, customer explanations, trust and data protection in the end. I would clearly say it's cultural change. Technology is not the issue and compliance is not the issue. That's what we experienced. Making sure that your organization understands and starts to live cloud native mindset. That's the challenge in my eyes. We read about that in the books up front, but we were still uh, quite surprised uh, on how important it is to get everyone on board. Understanding the new mindset with cloud, accepting changes in daily behavior. For many people in a company going cloud native feels like a new job. That's interesting to hear. And green IT. Now, that's another hype in the industry right now. What about cloud and sustainability? Yeah, in my eyes, green IT has already been uh, replaced by other buzzwords. Obviously, I'm a bit tired of these hypes around sustainability, and, and let me explain why. Many companies in my eyes use the momentum of the general environmental awareness as a marketing opportunity. But the measures they take and the motivation behind their actions are very questionable. Instead of buying CO2 certificates or changing code to another programming language that uses less power, we should first take care of the big consumptions. For example, the on-premise data centers. Studies prove that operating the same workload can run with 70% fewer servers at a big cloud supplier. Not every system needs to be outlined for its own peak load. This saving in servers together with the highly standardized and optimized data centers can result in power savings of up to 80% compared to on-premise operation. These are real and valuable contributions. And in addition to that, the big cloud suppliers are progressing well, achieving net zero soon. The region where we operate our cloud workload, for example, is already fully powered by renewable energy. Okay, well, thank you both for today's chat. Thanks to you. Yeah, thanks for having us. And that would be a wrap for this first episode of Netsetsera Tech Tribe, navigating life in the IT community. As we close today, we encourage you to keep exploring, learning, and embracing the cloud native mindset. It's a journey that can lead to increased innovation, reduced cognitive load, and a brighter future for your organization in the digital age. If you found this episode insightful and inspiring, don't forget to subscribe and share it with your colleagues and fellow enthusiasts. We'll be back soon with more enticing topics and expert insights. Until then, greetings from me, your host, and remember that the IT community is a dynamic and ever-evolving space. It's up to you to thrive in it.